Dude, what the heck are you doing here? Are you that bored that you're checking out this video? Alright, maybe you're here because I made a comment on one of your videos. You know, like, who the heck is this guy? Or, again, you could be that bored. Or, maybe this is it. Your wife asked you to do the dishes. And you said, I've got to watch this educational video. You had to come up with something. So you just clicked. Okay, so say you came here because I commented on a video and you want to know who this guy is. As another tree guy would say, I'm just one of the ants. A smaller ant. But not like one of those red ants that's annoying and bites you. Well, my wife says I'm annoying, so yeah, sometimes. Anyway. I own a small tree removal business in northern New Hampshire. Um, so that's kind of who I am. I'm sure if we do more videos, we'll get into that a little more. Um, if you've wasted this much time watching this video, I suppose I could come up with something that might be handy for you. I got a couple tech tips coming up for you. Um, one was a buddy showed me. And then the other one I kind of came up with myself. Um, someone else might have come up with the same idea, but anyway, um, I'm going to show you both of these at those at the end of the video. Um, so um, basically, this is our first video, so please excuse the the quality of it. Um, but anyways, hopefully they'll get better over time. Um, I do plan on doing some more. Um, it's not going to be an everyday thing. It's, it might not even be an every week thing. Um, it's not even going to be an every week thing for a while, but hopefully it'll get to that point where I do some sort of video every week and they won't be so painful. Um, but, uh, well, let's show you that tech tip. Okay, those two tech tips. Um, I'm going to put this camera on my head. It's mounted on my helmet. Just that way I don't have to hold it and all that fun stuff. Um, so let me do that. And uh, hopefully I won't make you too seasick putting it on. All right. Okay. So for some of you watching this video uh, that have dealt with throw throw balls and throw ball lines, uh, if you really dealt with them for any length of time, you know that. It could be one shot, it could be three shots, it could be 30 shots. <laughs> or it could be, the heck with this, I'm going to spike up the tree. Unless, of course, you're pruning, and then you shouldn't do that. No matter how frustrating it gets. Um, so, I've taken the liberty of already setting the throw ball line. Not that this shot was very hard, and it actually went up easy. So, we could have filmed it, but... You know, had we filmed it, something would have gone wrong. Um, so anyway, um, for my first tech tip, um, we're going to show you um, get your throw ball. Um, I happen to use uh, high ball throw balls from Sherelle. Strongly recommend them. They're excellent throw balls. They work really well. Um, and they will shoot high. I use a, I use a uh, big shot currently. Okay, for the first tech tip, I've got the ball in my hand. I got my line in my hand. Okay. Now these lines are small and they're kind of hard to get knots out of sometimes, even if you put like a running bowling or something like that in it. Plus, this one's all covered in sap from use. So it can be a pain to tie and untie a ball, especially if you make your first shot and it goes over a bad crotch, you know, a V crotch, and you want to take your ball off and pull it back through because you don't want to try to pull the ball back through because you know it's going to get stuck. So you don't do that. Well, this makes it so you can do that in a fast manner so you're not like untying and retying a knot all the time. So what I've done is I've put a bowline in here, um, 
which you can't really see very well and there's there was the tail has been tied off on it just to keep it so it's not flapping around really um, this bowling is a little bit on the long side for this but basically all you need is a bowling that's got a long enough loop to get around the ball okay this could have been just a little bit smaller plus this ball squeezes up which I also recommend that as soon as cold weather comes don't use these balls anymore because you'll shatter them if you live up north like I do up in New Hampshire um, you don't want cold balls because um, they'll just shatter so anyway so you got this loop and uh, you stick the whole thing through your ring and then you put it around the ball like this and you pull it up then you just dress it up like that and there you go your balls on your line secured and ready to throw okay and the way you take this off is you grab the front of the part of the loop that's looped over just go like that and boom you're off okay now that's something a buddy of mine showed showed me which someone showed it to him um, the one thing that can happen um, and that's why you want to make your loop as small as possible but still able to go around the projectile that you're using um, is this right here sometimes in thick brush up in the tree in the canopy a stick could get in between here and here and then of course once it's in there your ball is not going to be able to go up and it's going to get stuck on it so the idea is to make this short as you possibly can and still work now that doesn't happen a lot, but it can, but to limit that possibility as much as possible, you want to make that as short as you can and still be able to go over this throw ball. So we're going to take this out again. Okay, there you go, it's off. Now, for my second tech tip, um, I came out with this. I came up with this myself. Um, I'm just going to set this in here for now, just like that. We're just going to reach in here and grab this. What do we have here? We have a roll of electrical tape, okay? And here's what I recommend. Buy two rolls, okay? Keep one in your throw ball bag or on your person for when you're working, and keep the other one in your truck. Okay, so you have a backup. Okay, you're gonna use this one until you run out. Then you go to your truck and you get the other one. And then within the next few days after that, you go buy another roll. So then you're never without it. Until you take it out and leave it someplace. You take your rope. Now, a lot of times you have a line, if you're like me, and your claim might, a claim might already might have a built-in loop in it, which I strongly suggest most systems would be better with a braided loop already in the line. One, if not one on each end, depending on what kind of rope you have, whether it can be done, and depending on how your system works. Okay. So you got this here, you got this rope. I used a different rope than I usually use for climbing for demonstration purposes. Also, just throw, show putting the line up, which you can also use this to set a line to pull a tree over with, too, if you don't want to climb up there, well, you want to shoot a ball up there and get a line up there, so on and so forth. So, we're going to take this. We already have the loop and a line, if you remember, from before with the throw ball. It's already there. So you take this line, stick it up through the loop, put it back to itself, make yourself a loop. Okay. But before we do that, I'm going to show you a little bit about what would happen if you did it the other way, which some of you may already know, how they whip the end. And you just take it, put it like so, 
then you take your thing and you wind it around and you wind it around and you wind it around and wind it around okay now this one has has you know it's doubled over because I got that loop and I'm not going to take it out but normally you wouldn't have the loop and you just have an end of the line and then you can pull that through and then you can cinch it up like that and pull it tight and suck it onto the line well here you have this but you have this end of the rope sticking out because it always comes off a side well when that happens when you go to go over the branch yeah if it went over the branch like this and stay like this you probably be pretty fine but if it does this and then it gets caught behind the branch or worse it gets pinned like that then you can't get through so then you got to pop it back down and then maybe you flip it and pop it over okay but there's a solution for that there's a good solution for that instead of doing that and taking the time to do that and sometimes you can pull on that high nothing if you didn't set your whip very well you could pull out your whip and you just lost your throw ball line set up in the whole nine yards and really sucks but instead of doing that you take your handy dandy tape electrical tape works best for this you take your tape you take your line take your loop put it through put it back like so put it in there like that then you just take your tape and you start going around and around like so now you could stop and break it off here but yeah I don't usually do that I usually go all the way to the end of where I got it folded over and over the end so that it's covered so it's less likely to snag on that too maybe if you're sending it back through the other way or whatnot you know there's less stuff for it to drag on okay this is pretty strong okay but don't hang off it this is just for setting the line I know that most of you would get that but somebody would try it okay so that's pretty strong and when you pull that up through it's actually not that easy to pull that out by accident if you were trying to pull it up through and you got snagged in some stuff. It, it'll fight through some pretty good stuff. What this does is make this rounded front. So when it comes across the branch, it naturally, this wants to stay up here in the nose instead of on the side. So when it comes up on a branch, it pushes it up past there and it's able to go over easier. Okay. and most times it won't get snagged so now we're gonna demonstrate that you just pull your line now, another thing we recommend is that you do use a cube for your throw ball line um, especially when you're using a big shot or even hand deploying it it's nice to be able to open a bag and flop it open you got your line flaked in it and you just shoot it up Especially if you make more than one shot, because then you can get tangled in the stuff on the ground, and so on and so forth. And that's no fun. So, what we're going to do, we're just going to pull this up. And it will a lot of times stop when you get to the branch of whatever you want to open. It'll bind up a little bit. Now, if you're using this method, it can be hard on your hand. You can put a stick in here instead. And if you're pulling over a tree, don't ever do this because, well, you, those of you that know, obviously if the weight of the tree was too heavy, you, you could go for a ride the other way, and I've actually seen someone do that. Because <laughs> your hand doesn't come out. And I also, a lot of people who don't want to do this, because, you know, it's, it's a little bit rough on the hands, and especially if it sticks. You just give it a little, then yeah, that's all it is. Pops over, sometimes it'll just float over like nothing, but usually it takes a little something to pop it over. Then you got it over and you just pull it down and you're putting it as a bag in the bag as you're pulling it down. Um, so anyways, there you go, and there's your line. Okay? And now 
I recommend that you start at one end every time you do it. Like if you like to start at the top, which is where I recommend you start at the top and then wind your way to the bottom. It's how I recommend you tape it up. You could go the other way and do it that way. But this way you know which end has the end of the tape on it. Because sometimes it's not so obvious. It'll blend right in and then you're like, oh, where the heck is it? And if you're trying on the wrong end of it, obviously, <laughs> it's going to take forever. But then you just take this. And you're probably using between 5 cents and 25 cents worth of tape. You know, 25 maybe at worst. Can't even see her, but I think you're using like 5 cents or less worth of tape. So for the time it saves you and the aggravation it might save you from getting stuck, it's certainly worth it. I think you make more money than that by doing it this way. Once you learn how to do it, which is a real simple trick to do. So now you got that off. You simply slide that off. Pull your rope so it's not going to go back up. Your bag folds up on you because you're doing a demonstration. Let's pop it back up. Open. Now you take your thing. Um, one thing I will tell you is when these cubes start to get old, sometimes they start to act up like they close up real easy on you. Um, but this is definitely a good bag. I'm sure, old Tree makes this particular one. Um, that I'm using now. And then you just put your throw ball line back on there. And what I do is I take my little Velcro, put that like that. And the other thing you should do is take your tape. I have a habit of putting stuff down and losing it. Take your tape and put it back in here. And then you just take your spin this shut. You look for the strap angle what you're looking for is one of these and you're looking for this thing right here it goes like that and just close your bag up and you're all set voila you're all done